Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I have been channeling my inner monk in this, trying to look at this from every angle possible, and I still got nothing. I mean, we do know that Victor Kudo was sitting at a table near the entrance to the kitchen, so truly he was only able to see the victim. There is no doubt about it, which doesn't really help the situation, though, whether Tigre was there or not. Come on, Nobi, think. This case doesn't seem like a difficult one. The motive behind Tigre's murder was to get the MC Bomber from Glen Elg, to sell it on the black market, get the money, pay the debt for Bruto, and get away scot free. The fact that Glen Elg won the lottery the day he died more than likely made Glen reconsider selling the MC Bomber CD. So Tigre killed him there with the poison and stole the CD that way. I mean, this was easy. Even a fifth grader can think of the motive. But I am still stuck on how he managed to get away so easily afterwards. That and the statements Maggie and Kudo have made are definitely conflicting with one another. And I having my doubts any of them are lying about this. Maggie said that she did not see Kudo at the restaurant when serving the victim, but a woman instead. And that woman more than likely is Viola. I mean, she even said at the end of the investigation that she helped Furio Tigre, which more than likely refers to the murder at Trebian. Therefore, it makes a strong case for Kudo's statement, where he said that he saw the waitress pour the poison in the coffee. And I had my suspicion in the trial too that maybe it was a different waitress. After all, Kudo did not see the witch's face, only the back. However, Maggie is saying that it was the killer at the table, Furio Tigre, that put the poison in the coffee, that she was there when it happened, and then she fainted. Both Kudo and Maggie have no reason to lie about this either, so... What is it? Who is the one that is in the wrong here? This whole thing is like a mesh of contradictory yin-yang where both feel right, but at the same time, together they make a wrong. It's... A contradictory yin-yang where both feel right. Huh. If I am to think outside the box a little, maybe it's not that one of them is wrong. Maybe they are both right. Yeah, this could work actually. Here's what happened. Both Furio Tigre and Glen Elk met at Trebien to make the deal at 1.30pm. But when it was announced over the radio that Glen Elk's lottery ticket was the winner, Tigre had no choice but to kill him by putting the poison inside Glen's coffee while he was excited and distracted because of the announcement. The coffee which was then sent by Maggie to them. When Glen instantly died right then and there, Maggie fainted. The only people that were left inside at Trebien were Jean Armstrong, in cahoots with Furio Tigre, and Viola Cadaverini. However, just leaving the matters like that wouldn't cut it. He would be caught at some point, so he needed a strong alibi, in the form of Victor Kudo. After Maggie fainted, they hid her body in a different room. Same with Glen Elk. However, in order for the trick to work, he needed to disguise himself as Glenn, impersonate and recreate the scene while Victor Kudo was there at Trebien later. So he put his clothes on and the earpiece on his left side, not noticing or forgetting that before, Glenn Oak had the earpiece on his right when he was alive, because his left ear was ruptured. So the game was on. Furio Tigre disguised as Glenn Oak sat on the other side of the table, Victor Kudo at his own table with visibility directed only at where Glen Elk's original position was, without being able to see if there was anyone else at the table. Furio Tigre then recreated the same scene as before with Glen Elk, getting excited that he won the lottery. Then Viola came in dressed as a waitress with a the coffee, then putting the poison in the coffee herself very clearly so that Victor Kudo can see it happen thus creating a much stronger alibi in court when he says that he saw the waitress put the poison inside the coffee, which would put the blame on Maggie even more. And then, after John Armstrong forced Victor Kudo to call the police and made him exit the restaurant, Furio changed clothes again and put Glenn's body back where he originally was. He also put Maggie's body back where it was, except this time with the poison inside her apron to incriminate her even more. The only thing left to do afterwards is to impersonate Nick in trial, falsify evidence, and lose the case. 
There you go. This has to be it. And the case was probably thinking that it was gonna get away scot-free. What can I say? I am Grant. One of the best detectives around. Or one of a kind. The only thing left to do is destroy Furio Tigre in the trial. And then the case is closed. No regrets putting that bastard behind the bars. Viola, though, has a different story. She is definitely going through a rough time knowing that Tigre never cared about her. Probably has no friends either to comfort her, knowing that she is the granddaughter of Bruno Calabrini. And most people are scared of her because of it. In that case, it looks like I'm going to be doing today's trial the old-fashioned way. It's a jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. Bow, bow, da, da, da.